I finally finished The Witness after attempting a playthrough for the seventh time, and I really, really loved it. The look of the island, how the different puzzle types interact with each other, the constant uneasy feeling that followed me everywhere. It was such a breeze to go through that, in the end, I was a little surprised. Why didn't I finish this game at the very first try? Why the seventh? I remember how I always loved the first half hour of the game, learning about its very basic mechanic. Circle starts a puzzle, and the part that sticks out is the literal finish line, and in between, there's puzzle elements. It's almost always the exact same layout, just with different mechanics modifying the way you solve it. But every time I finish the tutorial, I only play for one or two puzzle biomes. After that I get fed up with the game and stop playing altogether. Sometimes I didn't get what the game wanted from me, and other times I just found everything to be way too challenging. I always felt like there was a really good game behind my struggles, but also that I was just too stupid to get it right now. This time though, everything went smoothly. I braced for the whole thing in a few sessions and uh... How do I say this? The witness felt like a metroidvania? Still here? Great, because after I embraced that feeling, I learned to enjoy the game a lot more. This isn't your typical puzzle or brain teaser game. If I think of those, I think of something more... flat? Something along the lines of Hook, or any other game from Maciej Targoni. God, I butchered that, didn't I? They make small, hour-long contained puzzle games. Similar to The Witness, they use a very simple mechanic and twist it in interesting ways. Every few levels a new mechanic gets introduced, but since the runtime is limited to something like 50 puzzles, the difficulty stays manageable. You can usually finish a game like this in just one session, and the closer you move to the finish line, the longer you usually need per puzzle. The Witness, on the other hand, isn't flat. It has a lot of depth. First of all, it isn't just puzzle solving. After finishing one, you gotta move and find the next one. To do so, you're exploring one of the most colorful islands you ever... Witness? Sorry. Each colored or themed section of the island acts as a biome that contains its own puzzle mechanic. After finishing a set of those, you'll have to continue searching for the next one. Sometimes puzzles are right next to each other. Sometimes you'll have to follow power lines to see where you've unlocked something new. And sometimes they just end right here and there, without having unlocked anything new, forcing you to search for more. Either way, the game is chock full of exploration, which also makes it non-linear. There isn't a correct order in which you should approach the biomes, you'll just have to see what works for you, which areas are manageable, and see at which point you'll hit a roadblock. And that's where the Metroidvania feeling kicks in for me. Think about a classic one, something like Hollow Knight. One of the best games ever still waiting for Soul Song, please Team Cherry, release it, release it, release it, release it. Part of the game is exploration, and while doing exactly that, you'll come across barriers. They require some sort of ability or key that you unlock by exploring the current area or biome you're in. After a bit of exploring, you'll drop into a pit of no return, go for a quick tutorial section to learn the new ability, and voila, your movement arsenal increases. Each ability makes it slightly easier to continue your journey, allowing you to explore more places, where you usually find more collectibles and unlock even more abilities leading to... You, you get it, right? And that's exactly how the witness feels. Getting to the flooded laboratory from one side will make your brain melt. You have these odd shapes everywhere, can progress in all and you'll feel like you're almost too dumb to understand it. That's the barrier. If you continue to explore the island, you might stumble upon this panel right here. And this one. And this one after that. Ah, now you're getting it. You're slowly being taught a new idea for an unguided tutorial, and suddenly you unlock a lot of different pathways you couldn't access before. Exploration? Check. Challenges along the way? Check. Roadblocks? Check. Upgrades? Uh, the big difference being, Metroidvanias give you upgrades in the form of keys or game mechanics. Barricaded doors suddenly open thanks to your new beam, or inaccessible platforms are suddenly within reach due to your new wall jump ability. The witness on the other hand asks you to use your brain and create your own cognitive abilities. Either way, they both unlock new pathways to explore, and in my eyes this makes the witness an excellent Metroidbrainia. Yeah, go on, let it sink in. 
this masterpiece of a name is so good that I obviously didn't make it up myself. Make sure to write XX Nerd at Heart XX a nice message, cause they coined that term and allowed me to use it for this video. In other words, welcome pal, how are you doing? Anyway, I had to understand that The Witness isn't your typical puzzle game. And after I used my metroidvania approach to play it, I didn't get discouraged when I wasn't able to solve a puzzle. I just left a mental, sometimes even literal mark, quite a bit of those, to come back later once I understand what the new unknown symbol asks of me. I had a lot more patience for the game because it was similar to something I already knew pretty well. So, The Witness has a big interconnected map that you can explore freely check. There's always different sets of puzzles along the way, like small challenges or enemies. Check. Different biomes offer different challenges and usually teach you a new ability. Check. Abilities enhance how you can interact with the world. Ch oh, okay, we stopped the check right now. Sometimes you even unlock shortcuts between areas once you've mastered an ability. There is extra collectibles and goodies if you go the extra mile while exploring. You can't finish the game without unlocking all cognitive abilities. Low percent check. The ending is a challenging gauntlet of puzzles that tests all of your abilities. 100% ability completion grants you another, even more challenging gauntlet that you cannot cheese and it requires true mastery. Even this gets a check in the witness. If you're anything like me, then... First of all, I'm really sorry. And second of all, you probably struggle with genres you aren't used to. Try to change the way you think about a game, its mechanics and sometimes even the genre. Maybe you'll see things from a new perspective. Huh. And maybe even someone as stubborn as me can find the patience to enjoy something as slow as The Witness. And if you're really stuck at a puzzle, there's no shame in googling. I did too, it's okay. It's about having fun, not proving yourself, right?